Welcome. This is an introductory video to how to build an electronic kit, either for fun or for a school project, that requires soldering. So the first thing that we're going to do, even though it seems like common sense, is we're going to check our manual, open it up just like this, and make sure that we have all the components necessary to build the project. Because the last thing you want to do is start building your project and find out that you don't have a component and it's too late to return it. So we're going to put away our manual for a second and talk about soldering. What soldering essentially is, is it's using an alloy that has the properties of melting easily and solidifying just as quickly so that way it's perfect to secure components to a circuit board. It's just like glue except since it's metal it allows the conduction of current. But in order to melt the solder, you need an instrument that will that produces heat, and that's where the soldering iron comes in. The soldering iron is essentially a tool that converts wattage into heat, and it melts the solder onto your circuit board. But you have to be careful when choosing the wattage that you're going to use in the soldering iron for your project, because if you have too much wattage, it could produce too much heat, and it could potentially melt your circuit board. That's why you need to go back to your manual here and generally it'll have it in the top left hand corner where they're teaching you how to solder. It'll show you the maximum wattage that's needed for this type of project. So for this MK186 Velum and Light Organ that I'm building, it requires a maximum of 40 watts and that wattage will produce just enough heat that it will melt the solder onto the circuits but it will not melt the circuit board. So you have to think of some of the, the basic components of soldering. First of all, you have your solder, obviously. And you're going to want to use a thin solder, uh, typically 0 0.031 or 0 0.032 inches in diameter. I've experimented with thicker solder, and I found that it doesn't work as well for soldering the circuit boards that you're going to be using. So the next component of soldering is your soldering iron, and you need some basic tools in order to solder correctly. First of all, you need your soldering iron stand. The soldering iron is extremely hot and it will burn anything that it comes into contact with. So you want to make sure that you have the stand so that way that problem doesn't occur. And the second is a wet or a damp sponge um, which comes into play when you're tinning the tip of your soldering iron. So tinning the tip of your soldering iron is an extremely important aspect of soldering. When you're tinning the tip, you're accomplishing two major things. One is that you acknowledge that the tip is hot enough to melt the solder iron on. And two is that you're acknowledging that it's, it's going to be less likely for the solder to stick to the soldering iron rather than the circuit board when you're trying to solder onto the circuit board. So the wet sponge is, comes into play when you're tinning your tip. You make sure you have that solder. You know that it's hot enough to solder onto. And then you're just going to use the sponge to wipe off the excess solder on the iron. So let's get this thing going. We're going to go back to our manual and look at our instructions. So the first part of completing this particular, particular project is the step one, which is the resistors. So they give you uh, nine different resistors. And resistors one through five and R through and R8 have a striping that is brown, black, and orange. So I'm going to look at this resistor right here. And this is an R1 through five resistor. And as you can see, the striping is brown, black, and orange. And it lines up just with the, the uh, diagram here in the manual. So you want to make sure that you're lining up your resistors exactly how they show you in the in directions. So you have your circuit board here. And as you can see, I've taken this resistor with the brown, black, and orange striping. And I've put it in the resistor 1 correspondent place. So you're going to bend your resistor just like this and you're going to stick it through the holes in the resistor 1. Secure it and then you're going to flip your circuit board over so that you can begin soldering. I recommend soldering like this and in that way you'll be able to have better access to the joints. But I recommend also using gravity as your friend in this situation. Because you're transforming the solder from a, a metal into a liquid, it's going to run. 
and you want gravity to be working for you rather than against you. So you want the solder to run down here in an area where there aren't as many joints, that way you're not soldering a joint that you didn't intend to solder. So before we begin to solder, there's a few safety precautions that we need to take. As you may have noticed earlier when I was tinning the tip, there was a little bit of smoke that was created due to the melting of the alloy. So you have to make sure that one, you're in a well-ventilated area so that the smoke will not become uh, too blocked up in the area that you're working. And two, if you're particularly sensitive to smoke, you might want to consider using a mask such as this in order to protect yourself and, and from the smoke and inhaling it. Also, you might want to consider using a fan to chase the smoke out of the area that you're working in. And the last safety precaution that you might want to consider is that since you are melting a solid into a liquid form, there could be a chance of splatter. So I recommend getting a pair of goggles, just like these ones, to protect your eyes. Now that we're all safe and ready to go, let's begin to work on our project. So first, we're going to take our solder, soldering iron, and tin the tip. Okay, that's ready to go. Then you want to make sure that you stick your soldering iron just so it heats up the joint. You never want to touch your solder to your soldering iron while you're soldering to the circuit board because the solder could potentially stick to the tip of the iron. So you're going to heat the joint up just like so. When it's properly heated, the solder will stick to the board, just like so. Now we come to our next wire. We're going to have to make sure that we have access to it. We're going to heat up the joint. And we're going to stick the solder right on there. Presto. And that's how you solder your components to your circuit board. Thank you very much.